Why, hello, and welcome to another episode of First Chances with Chance. And in today's episode, we're going to be talking about shopping and shopping therapy. So, ever since I was little, I've always liked going shopping, whether it be grocery shopping or just shopping. Uh, I usually always went with my mom. Now we usually go together still to, uh, when I have to go grocery shopping because I don't have a car, which I am building my credit for in order to get a car and not have to have a co-signer, which will be uh, quite a while, maybe a year from now. Hope, uh, hopefully it's just that. Um, and yeah. So de retail therapy, definitely, I don't know if it helps me, I know it helps, like I like going around shopping and everything, it's definitely calming, um, unless my mom's like, we're in a rush, we need to hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, like then it's just like, whatever, but most of the time I definitely love shopping, have loved shopping since I was younger and it's always been like therapeutic even when I was younger I always have loved shopping and recently I for my birthday as you guys know I've talked about it like I don't know on how many episodes now but I went shopping, I went to the mall, got some Lush products, got some, um, a Cinnabon, and I got my free small cold brew from Cinnabon, I got my free pretzel from Auntie Anne's, then I went to Ulta and got my free product. And I bought some Jaclyn, uh, one of the Jaclyn Hill blush bronzer duos. I bought, accidentally bought the wrong item from Fenty Beauty. I bought the illuminating face uh, stick instead of the contour stick. So I had to go back the other day and return, do it in, like an exchange to get the contour stick. I got a candle for when I do my spa days. I got some new uh, hair curl cream. I got some ColourPop, uh, ColourPop highlighter. I got, what else did I get? Um, what else did I get from? Ulta. I definitely know I got something else. Or I'm pretty sure I got something else. Bronzer Blush Duo. Fenty Beauty. The Candle. The Hair Cream. There was another item that I got. Um... What else did I get? Candle, Bronzer Brush Duo, ColourPop, Fenty Beauty. Oh no, I, that was it. I did get only five items. Um, and then I took the went to go to the shoe store that's right next to my Ulta, but all the shoes are ugly and overpriced. So I will not be buying shoes for any from them anytime soon. But I definitely need to go to my other shoe store to get new shoes because I've had the same ones for about a year now. I mean, yeah, they still have enough um, of the bottom to them that I could still wear them. But it's more of the fact that I need new shoes because they're starting to hurt every time I walk to work. Um... And then I went to Target 
and by a body wash from Olay with hyaluronic acid and vitamin B3, I think. Um, a back scrubber from that I saw on Alyssa Ashley's channel. I got one of the new Ma uh, Maybelline Superstay vinyls. I got it shade Koi. I got Elf concealer sponge. I got a dupe for the Bum Bum Cream. It was the Tropical Glow by Tree Hut Body Butter. I got my free drink on the Saturday, but not the Friday that I went shopping. Um, and then before that, I got the new bronzer from Makeup Revolution. It's a cream bronzer, so I'm excited to try that out. This um, You'll see that video soon. Um, did I buy anything else? I'm pretty sure that... Oh, and then I bought a dry shampoo that definitely leaves a lot of white cast. Not white cast, but a lot of like powdery in your hair. So you have to brush it out and then it makes my hair frizzy. Uh, whatever. Um, definitely used that uh, this morning and I definitely had to brush my hair out. Definitely left my hair poofy. So, yeah. I'll have to figure out a way to not, I mean, to be able to get rid of the whiteness without brushing my hair out. I think it might, I might use a blow dryer. I don't know. It, I have to do some research for that one, but I was supposed to buy clothes uh, that day too, but I my feet were already hurting. I wore heels, so I was like, you know what? Let's just go to Firehouse Subs and get my free medium sub and catch the bus home because we were not putting up with that, especially if I'm going to be wearing the heels later on in the night, which I did. I wore the same outfit the whole entire day. Surprising me. It surprised me because I planned it mainly for karaoke that night, but I was like, you know what? Let me show off the outfit during the day too. Because, you know, a boss be bossing. A queen be leading. But... I've all, especially clo uh, buying cl new clothes for like outfits and everything has always been fun, especially now that I like, I also have to promote my Shein ambassadorship. So, you know, it's always fun doing that, especially when I buy clothes from Shein, which I have another a bathing suit set that I have to do a photo shoot for but there's no more pool in my backyard so that's unfortunate but I really am loving like I really did have fun like it definitely was therapeutic on uh, going shopping that day and I will definitely go shopping again because you know us Leo's got to celebrate the whole entire year not year month why did I say year that's so I meant month I don't know but we're gonna go ahead and take our first break and then I will be back with some more. So I am back and I'm going to go ahead and pull up an article from WebMD. It says, is retail therapy for real? 
If you've gone shopping when you're feeling sad or stressed, you may recall how your mood improved when you're window shopped when you window shopped or bought something. Does retail therapy really make you feel better? What is retail therapy? Retail therapy is when you go shopping for the main purpose of making yourself feel better. A study found that 62% of shoppers bought something to cheer themselves up. A further 28% made a purchase to celebrate something. How does shopping make you feel better? Many people think of retail therapy as wasteful, but there may be psychological benefits to going shopping. Helps you feel in control. Sadness is gener generally associ associated with a feeling that you can't control what's happening in your life. Experts say that the act of making choices when shopping can restore your feeling of control over your life. A study found that buying things you enjoy can be up to 40 times more effective at giving you a sense of control in your life compared to not shopping. Brings happiness. You can get an emotional and psychological boost from visiting stores or even browsing online. Anticipating the possibility of a treat or a reward releases a hormone called dopamine in your brain. This causes you to feel good. Dopamine makes you want to keep finding ways to make you feel good. Sometimes you don't even need to buy something to feel better. Going window shopping or filling up an online cart allows you to have an exciting emotional journey. Distraction. Getting out of your house and going shopping may provide a distraction for, from whatever is making you feel sad. The brightly lit and colorful displays at the stores can take you away from your own reality. This works with online shopping too. The attractively curated online products can distract you from your sadness. Social interaction, shopping gets you out of the house and into a mall with other people. In a survey, participants shopped alone, but the act of shopping gave them a connection to society. Saving up can be therapeutic. The act of saving up for an item can give you something to look forward to. This results in a release of dopamine over time. When shopping becomes problematic, shopping may have emotional benefits, but it can also become a problem. Money problems. Shopping may lighten your stress, but it can also lighten your wallet. This is especially the case when you use credit cards or online payment methods. Research has shown that paying with cards and online apps feels less real than paying with cash. This means you tend to spend more. Addiction. Shopping can also turn into compulsive behavior. People with compulsive buying disorder spend significant time on shopping and spending money. This, disor this disorder has several phases. Anticipation, where you, can, where you have an urge to go shopping or buy a specific item. Preparation for shopping, such as thinking about where and when to go. Research on sale items and new shops. The actual shopping experience, which you find exciting. The purchase, which is then followed by a sense of disappointment with yourself. Signs of a shopping addiction. Some 5.8% of Americans have an addiction to shopping. This compulsion tends to start in the late teens or early 20s. There's some evidence that it runs in families who tend to also have anxiety, mood, and some substance abuse disorders. You may have a shopping compulsion if you spend a lot of time researching items that you may not need, have money problems because of your shopping, are constantly thinking of buying unneeded things, have difficulty stopping yourself from buying unnecessary items, have problems at home, school, or work because of your uncontrollable spending. If you're concerned about shopping becoming a compulsion, look for support groups and therapy. Financial counseling may help with any money problems. How to use retail therapy without going broke. Some things to keep in mind during retail therapy. Track your purchases. Overspending may lead to debt which is likely to add to your stress. Shop wisely, don't buy things that you don't need. Don't buy anything, try window shopping instead. 
Be aware of dangerous behaviors. Are you choosing to shop instead of getting your work done? Do you prefer to go shopping alone instead of meeting with your family and friends? It may be time to get help from a therapist. Don't spend to relieve your boredom. It's only a temporary distraction. Find other ways to improve your mood and feel better. This includes exercising, sleeping well, and eating healthy. Find a creative project or take up a new sport to prevent boredom. So that was one article that I'm going to read, but we have others. So let's pull up this one by Retail Therapy SRB. Oh, it's not an article then. Okay, well, what was that one? That was WebMD. There's one by Cleveland Clinic. Why retail therapy makes you feel happier. When we say we need a little retail therapy, just about everyone can relate to the sheer joy that buying a little something for yourself brings. But does shopping really help us feel better? Yes, in fact it does, says clinical psychologist Scott B. Research suggests there's actually a lot of psychological and therapeutic value in your shopping, if done in moderation, of course, he says. Whether you're adding items to your shopping cart online or visiting your favorite boutique for a few hours, you do get a psychological and emotional boost, he adds. Even window shopping or online browsing can bring brain-fueled happiness, but again, you want to make sure it doesn't get out of hand. According to Dr. B, there are many reasons why. Shopping restores a sense of control. Research has shown that making shopping decisions can help reinforce a sense of personal control over our environment. It can also ease feelings of sadness. A 2014 study from the Journal of Consumer Psychology found that retail therapy not only makes people happier immediately, but it can also fight lingering sadness. According to the study, sadness is gener generally associated with the sense that situations are in control of the outcomes in our life, rather than life being in our own hands. Excuse me. The choices and outcomes inherent in the act of shopping can restore a feeling of personal control and autonomy. This is true for re residual sadness we may be feeling as well. Another 2014 study by University of Michigan showed that purchasing things you personally enjoy can be up to 40 times more effective at giving you a sense of control than not shopping. In this case, those who actually purchased items were also three times less sad when compared to those who only browsed. The study suggests that when you're feeling as if things aren't going your way, getting exactly what you want can feel like a positive personal achievement, uh, Dr. B says. The smell of something new, the bright lights and colorful displays combine to create an imaginative sensory experience that can remove us from our own reality. Even for a, while, a little while, Dr. B says, this translates online to those perfectly merchandised, personally curated online products can get our imagination going as we project ourselves in satisfying environments. Shopping and its sensory stimulation gets us to visualize positive outcomes, Dr. B says. Athletes, for example, have also found that this type of visualization can create positive anticipation and can reduce anxiety. So we're going to go ahead and take another break and be back with the hope possibly the rest of the article. So now that I am back, Let's go ahead and read more of the article. Dopamine is released even before a purchase is made. As Dr. B points out, just browsing, scrolling, or window shopping, but not buying something can positively impact your mood. It's this simple anticipation of the eventual 
possibility of a reward or treat that releases dopamine, the hormone neurotransmitter in your brain that makes you feel good. Dopamine increases your desire to continue to seek out things that make you feel good, hence retail therapy being a favorite go-to. Some think the dopamine is released when you actually get a reward or purchase an item, but it begins before you make a purchase as you're delighting in all the possibilities, he says. It's about the whole journey. Mood benefits from online shopping. Dr. B gives a great example of release of dopamine earlier in the shopping journey. Ever fill up an online cart but abandon it because you already feel relatively satisfied? It's that, he says. You don't always need to purchase something to feel delight because you've gone through an exciting mental journey already, he adds. In that regard, there's relatively low hazard. Spending less money may be even more rewarding. Online shopping can also ignite dopamine release in another way. Waiting for your package to arrive? Think about retail subscriptions where you may not know exactly what's being delivered in the box. The unpredictability increases your anticipation, and since the reward is unpredictable, you experience dopamine-fueled excitement. The psychological perks of saving up. If you're a fan of retail therapy, there's another route to consider. It can also be psychological, ther psychologically therapeutic if you save up for that reward rather than buying something immediately with a credit card. Applying the theory of anticipation, saving up for your reward gives you something to look forward to, which creates excitement and a release of dopamine over time. When shopping becomes a problem, of course you want to ensure you're not taking shopping to an extreme. For some, shopping can become a problem. For many, it can become an addiction. Shopping shifts from being therapeutic to a problematic compulsive behavior when it becomes a go-to way of dealing with anxiety, stress, or loss, and when it's hard to control, Dr. B says. Shopping addiction goes by many other names, such as oniomania, compulsive buying disorder, buying shopping disorder, and pathological buying. It is estimated about 5% of American consumers exhibit compulsive buying behavior. Compulsive buying has significantly risen in development economies and through the evolution of online shopping. Compulsive shoppers have frequent buying episodes or overpowering urges to purchase items, Dr. B says. This behavior is linked to feelings of worthy, worthlessness in addition to a lack of power. This condition has a lot in common with other impulse control disorders like sex addiction and gambling addiction, he adds. There is also similarity between compulsive shopping urges and the high that's sought after in drug or alcohol addiction. Compulsive shoppers may also experience blackout episodes similar to alcohol-related blackouts in which the buyer does not recall making purchases. Signs of a shopaholic. Pay attention if you feel your spending is out of control. Signs of a shopping compulsive include preoccupation with and difficulty resisting buying unneeded items, spending a lot of time doing research on items that may or may or not be needed, financial difficulties because of uncontrolled shopping, problems at work, school, or home because of shopping that's gotten out of control. Therapy and support groups can help if you think you may have a problem, Dr. B says, as well as education. Shopaholics will benefit most from learning what has led to their behavior, he says. Cutting up your credit cards isn't going to do it. The focus should be on exploring the underlying causes paired with the right kind of therapy. The bottom line is that although behaviors that create excitement can bring us happiness and moderation, is the difference between happiness and compulsiveness. If you're concerned about developing a compulsive shopping behavior, try to convert your goal of control to the excitement of a new positive behavior like working out or eating healthy, Dr. B suggests. You'll be surprised at how happy you can feel working towards those positive results too.
So that's it for that article and we're done reading articles. So if you guys would like to send in any of your guys' stories from even pre previous episodes, don't forget to text 561-320-7085. Well, text or leave a voicemail to 561-320-7085. DM first chances on Instagram. Or if you guys are watching the video portion, just comment down below. Again, text or leave a voicemail to 561-320-7085. DM first chances with chance on Instagram. Or if you guys are watching the YouTube portion, just Comment down below. Bye, guys. Love you.